Hello everyone, it's Melanie. I'm going to try to make a quick video. My composition book journal is almost full. I've only got um, like four or five, six pages left. So that means it's time for me to make a new one. And I have had quite a few questions uh, about how I prep my composition books. So I thought I would um, get my next one ready and show you how I do it. Um, especially for Christy, because I know Christy uh, had been asking me about it. So these are my composition books. Um, I started this in July 2016 and this particular journal took way longer than that because I was doing other kinds of journals and things at the same time. Um, all of my composition book journals are based on or started because of this book by Linda Berry, which if you're into journaling writing, documenting, um, this book is absolutely amazing. And I'll put a, a, an Amazon link to it down in the, down in the bottom. And um, I'll do another, a separate video going through a flip through of all these, but I just wanted to kind of give you an overview in case you haven't seen any of my other videos where I'm talking about these books. So the way that this originally started, I just stitched uh, some scrapbook paper onto the front and back covers machine stitched it on with um, the sewing machine and I use this uh, white line co book tape for the spine this is the first one that I did um, the second one that I started on I started on it and then it kind of morphed into something else and it actually turned into a, a glue book of sorts so uh, when I started journaling in this one this way, um, just by gluing junk that was laying on my desk, um, I actually skipped ahead and started another one. This one, oh, this one is a piece of scrapbook paper. I collage some stamps and stuff on the front of it, and then it's got um, gloss varnish over the top of it. Uh, this one is another piece of scrapbook paper with stickers all over it. It's got stickers all over the back too. But I made a, um, a pocket with the transparency that I stitched on and then I just put my name in the front. So this one, same thing, this one has a lot more drawing in it. Um, I really like this one. This one might be one of my favorites because it has so much drawing in it. But so there's another one. Then this one was the first one that I put a piece of scrapbook paper on the on the base of it, and then I kind of collaged things on top. And then I have these transparencies. This transparency film, remember, from the overhead projectors? I got this, actually, I think I got three boxes of these for $1.99 each at Goodwill years ago. And I still have a bunch of them. And they're probably still available on, on Amazon. I honestly, I mean, <clears throat> I started this with 300 of them because I have three boxes like this. So I'm not going to run out anytime soon. But this is what I use, is this transparency film. So this one, I actually stitched a piece of the transparency film. I'll put, it, put a glare on it so you can see uh, on the front of this one. Then I did the same thing with this one. This is a, an M that I watercolored and then I put a little collage of uh, die cuts and cutouts and things like that on the front. And then I stitched a transparency over the front of it. This one, same basic thing. This one on the back, instead of scrapbook paper, this is um, a copy of one of my mo uh, water, got it upside down, um, of one of my, <clears throat> excuse me, marker florals and then I uh, put gloss varnish over the top of it. And then this is another one of my marker florals that I made a copy of. And then, uh, I don't know if you can see. So all of this stuff is just kind of like glued on so you can tell that it's, uh, that it's still separate. Um, and these journals are all basically the same. This is definitely my day-to-day -day kind of, uh, where I keep all my, it's, it's my dear diary. Um, this one, this is a painting that I did and then I made a copy of it because the original is actually in pastels, so I couldn't have used it. Um, then I 
put gloss varnish over the front of that. This one I was actually gonna use as a planner because when I went to order my, in June, I guess of 2019, when I went to order my um, tra uh, traveler's notebook, my Midori refills, they were, um, they were so expensive that I was like, oh my goodness, I, I'm not gonna spend $50 on those. So I did a planner, which I've done for years, you know, I did my own, but I kind of used it for a while and I went ahead and made another journal so I could do my writing in that one. And then, so this one really didn't turn out and this is volume seven and it's it doesn't really fit with the rest of them. It's still got a lot of blank pages, but it was part of these journals, so I'm leaving it in. So this is one I was working on simultaneously. This is a collage uh, that I did on the back on a separate piece of paper and then glued it on and it has gloss varnish on the front of it. And I don't know if you'll notice, I started, I guess, <clears throat> here with number three, I started putting my name on the front. So there's my name on that one, my name on that one, then I put an M on this one. This one has my name here and then I found these stickers and I put my name on it a second time. That one, this one, since I reprinted it, I, um, I did that on the computer and put my name on that one. This one has my initials. Um, let's see, here's volume nine. This one's a piece of glitter scrapbook paper, some scrapbook paper on the back. And then I put, because I use these three dimensional letters, I put a piece of transparency, stitched it on over the top of it. Um, and you can see there's still just kind of all just that sort of thing. And then this one was number 10. Um, so another couple of pieces of my favorite scrapbook paper and then I put some die cuts and things on top and then I stitched um, these, uh, I think this is from a piece of scrapbook paper, my initials to the front. And I did kind of start putting on a couple of them, I started putting the at least the year on the front. And then I always do this, even with the very beginning, even with the very first one, I always put something in the, the first page becomes like, that one I didn't finish it, becomes like a log of, you know, what's in this book. Um, so that's what I always do on my first page. So the one that I'm working in right now, uh, I took, this is a copy of some of that, um, a glare, of some of that woven paper that I did. And then this is a fantastic paper plate that a friend gave me. And I made a copy of it and shrunk it down because the plate's big. It's like this big. And then this actually has a, a, an actual piece of fabric, um, an old doily, vintage doily. And then I put uh, some fabric in the back. I kind of like doing things... That are relevant to whatever time is going on you know so this I liked because I had just done this woven stuff this piece of fabric that goes around the back of this that's um, some of that fabric I got from the uh, thrift store that was only 25 cents a piece and then this is part of let me silence this this is um, I was doing some of those Kelly Mae Krentz classes and I um, or the Nellie Wartman classes at the time. And so anyway, so this is the one I'm working in right now and it's almost full, like I said, and I'm ready to do my next one. So what kind of composition book do I use? I don't know if you noticed, but some of these are um, grid paper. Some of them are um, wide rule. Um, this is just wide rule. All of these journals, um, sort of at the prompting of Linda Berry, but also because it's pretty easy to tell. I used journals that were made in Vietnam. Um, you can also get them that were made in China. You can get them that were made in the United States. For some reason, the paper from the ones that are made in Vietnam, the paper is really slick. Um, and because of that, it seems like it's less porous. So it takes, because I write on every single page, it takes color better. You don't have as much bleed through as you do on the more porous papers, like the ones that are made in the US and China. 
Um, so what I do whenever I, you know, composition books are on sale, I look for the ones that are made in Vietnam. And I only have one more of these. This one is um, a made in Vietnam that's a grid. And the grid I really like. See, the grid is what I've been using this time. But I only I have one of these. Um, and I decided this time I'm gonna use this wide rule mead, which is what I used for this one back in January, February. Uh, the other thing about these is my books are not all the same size. If you can see, some of them are taller than others, um, but I'm not worrying about that. <clears throat> I'm just going with it. So this one is a little bit smaller than this one. Let's see, but I'm, I'm just gonna go with it. So these always have, you know, generally 100 sheets. I have gotten to wear over time that I've started tearing some pages out at the very beginning just so that they don't end up so thick that, um, you know, that I, I don't know, just so they're not so thick. So this one in particular, I tore um, seven folios out of. So what I'll do is just go to one side, I'll tear out, you know, like three pieces of paper here, and then I'll make sure I go flip those three pieces that I tore out. I'm gonna find the other half of those, you know, those pages on this side and they should just pull right out. So I took out seven pieces uh, of paper. So that's a, a total of 14 sheets. I will give you another suggestion. When you tear these out, I like to keep a piece of the paper that came from the journal like this. I don't know if you can see. So see how I've cut little things off of it? If I mess up in here, like I write something, I miss, you know, misspell something, then I use this extra sheet of paper from the journal to cut out a little piece and glue it over uh, where I have a mistake. So be sure you hang on to a couple of pieces of the paper from the journal that you can use if you wanna cover something up or uh, make them, you know, that kind of thing. And usually that's when I'm actually journaling and writing. And I, I write really fast and I know how to spell, but sometimes my hand moves faster than my brain, I think, and my letters don't look right. <laughs> so I think, you know, for later on, I just, I want them to, you know, people to be able to actually read them if, for my, whoever's gonna read them. So, I was gonna prep the front of this one. Um, so I started looking for something, and I'm liking the idea of using my art instead of putting, uh, you know, the scrapbook paper. So I originally started looking through this folder, which is a bunch of, um, <clears throat> a bunch of my jelly, jelly prints, and I was gonna um, copy, scan one of those and maybe use that, but then I found this, which, this is a color combination that I am just over the moon in love with. And then I also grabbed, let's see, some of these things. And this is some, a, a journal that I started. These are from a journal that I started and then decided not to use. So I tore these pages out thinking I would put them in something else eventually. Um, so I decided on this one because I had put something on it that says just passing the time. And for the time that we're in right now, you know, we're stuck at home where that's kind of what I feel like I'm doing right now, just passing the time. So this little collage I made on uh, June 3rd, 2014. So I didn't want to put it on there exactly as it is. Uh, this sound may sound silly, but you know, it's, it's a, it's a work I did in 2014. So to me, it's not, it's not current, you know? So I scanned it, made a copy of it. The copy that I made did not come out nearly as bright as the original. So I, I kind of, I really like how it turned out. What I ended up doing, and you could do this with any of your old artwork. I scanned it, copied it, and then I painted over it. So the, the colors that were not very bright, I painted over. The original has some metallics in it that didn't translate, you know, when I scanned and printed it. So I painted over it with um, gold metallic. I put some gold stickers on it. 
This is actually some pieces of gold lame fabric, which looks cool when you put it under the transparency and it's actually got three dimensional stuff. This is glitter. Um, so really I just kind of painted over it again, put a couple of stickers on it. I found this sticker. Uh, I'll show you, have to show you that book. I found this sticker of handshakes. So I found that, stuck it on there and because obviously we're we're not shaking hands right now. Um, I found this sticker and I thought, ooh, that would be good to put my volume 12 in. And then I kind of like putting my name on the front of all of them. So I stuck my name on here. So this one's gonna be Melanie, just passing the time, volume 12. And the fish is relevant because I've been playing that, <laughs> that game, Animal Crossing. This I put on, you know art glitter glue? This art glitter glue, if you actually use it for glitter, it's amazing. <laughs> So that's what this is. I just put some art glitter glue and then I put some of that, these conf like confetti glitter hearts. And then this is actually uh, some holographic glitter that I put on there. So I did that. I trimmed it to fit the front. I like to make it just a tiny bit smaller than the front. I trimmed my, ooh, which I guess I got dirty at some point yesterday. I trimmed my piece of um, transparency film to fit the top of this. And then I like to put, oh, I picked something for the back. I picked this scrapbook paper for the back because um, I thought it looked cute together. Although I really like this one on it too. But I bought this paper for this side. I don't know, but I really like that with it. I may go ahead and use this side. And then I, don't, I didn't do it on my first one or my second one, but eventually I started sewing pockets into the journal um, and there's different versions of them until I kind of figured out you know what I like the best I did the some diagonal pockets um, lately my favorite one is that one's got a diagonal where's my most recent this one I think is my favorite so far which is just a, a side pocket like that so I prep those uh, for the front and back at the same time so that I can sew, when I sew the front of the journal, I'm gonna sew the front on and the inside pocket uh, at the same time. I'm gonna stitch just these three sides, but I'm gonna stitch that all on at the same time. And then I made one for the back and I found this paper that has houses on it, which I feel like is also very timely considering uh, what's going on. So I am ready to stitch this one together and let me give you a little advice. I've messed up a number of these because if you put this on and then it shifts when you're putting this transparency on, if this transparency is crooked like this, it will never lay flat. It's awful, it's just awful. So there's two things. You can either glue the heck out of the front so that, that the paper underneath doesn't move, which is what I'm gonna go with this time and hope for the best. And then I clip, so I'm gonna cent like center that on there. And then I'm going to, make sure that's kind of straight, because I don't want that to shift at all. And then here's my transparency, which I got dirty. I was doing some other stuff yesterday. This you have to fasten on like, like crazy. Um, so let me place my pocket in here. Oops. Here's my pocket. And I'm going to put some masking tape to hold the pocket in place here. Just be careful that when you're putting t something like tapes, because this is going to be on the underside when I'm stitching, so I won't be able to see this. So if, if you have a piece of tape on here holding something down and it's on the bottom side when you're sewing, um, just make sure that there's not like a piece of tape that's flipped up, because if this catches on the bed of your machine, it, it's going to get stuck and it, just trust me, make sure that nothing on here is going to stick or um, cause you problems. So then, that's all stuck on, so I'm gonna clip this like crazy because I do not want it to move while I'm stitching. Yeah, let's 
let's see, I may even put some of these clips too, although I don't like sewing with these because they get in the way. So as far as stitching goes, um, I just stitched this on. I've been doing just a, a zigzag stitch. At first I was going around it like one or two times um, with a couple of, like a, one straight stitch and one zigzag, but I think I like just the one zigzag um, instead of trying to overdo it. So the most important part here is just that this transparency is so flat. Make sure it's flat. And you can even want to fasten it down, you know, hold it down there. So let me grab my machine. Ooh, too much stuff on the desk. And I'm going to do a zigzag. I'm going to go about... Um, three on length and three on width. So be really careful because, you know, this is loose on the back side. I do not stitch this side over here. I only stitch these three sides. So I'm gonna start here and go all the way around. Actually, I'm gonna go two and a half, two and a half. And it's kind of hard to sew through this piece right back there. So I just start as close as I can get my sewing machine foot. Um, And I don't seem to have any trouble um, stitching through these. I say that. Oh, because I'm running into something. I don't really have any trouble stitching through these um, on this little brother sewing machine. Just making sure that that's not. And I'm not getting all the way to the edge. Um, you know, 11 volumes in, it hasn't been an issue. I'm going to go a little wider. You could stitch around it as many times as you want to. It, just keep in mind that the more holes you put in it, the weaker it's going to get. So... So in my first few, I did stitch down this side. Um, now I just use the tape. I don't worry about that um, stitching there. I just use the book tape that I put on the spine to hold that. So let me get the back ready. And that looks like it stayed nice and flat. You can use this piece of tape. Tape the pocket in place, make sure that tape is smooth. And then I think I am gonna use this side of this back. I like it better. And I'm gonna put some, where'd my glue go? Put some glue on there so it doesn't shift. <clears throat> the ones that I've made that I used a piece of my artwork or a digital that I, of mine that I printed, I am, um, because I have an, an inkjet printer, so it's not waterproof, the ones that I use uh, different kind of paper on, or inkjet paper on, I put a coat of um, uh, gloss varnish. You could also use Mod Podge. I just, for some reason, I really like using the gloss varnish because it seems to be less sticky when it dries. So I'm gonna do the same thing on this one. I'm gonna start here, stitch all the way around and stop right there. And I'm just gonna do that zigzag stitch. Okay, so now we're finished with the machine. And the next step is to tape the spine. Oops, I didn't get my book tape ready before. 
Oh, here it is. This, I'll put a link to this tape below, but this is Line Co. brand book tape. I have bought other tape on Amazon. This one is, um, I don't know, can you see that? Cold Toast by MASH that I bought in November of 2019, and it was called Book Repair Tape. It is a lot thinner. Uh, it was cheaper than the Line Co. book tape, um, and this is two-inch tape, I think. Yeah, two-inch. Um, this was cheaper, and I like it, but not for the spines of these because, one, it's transparent, so you can see through it. Um, but anyway, I had to order the Line Co. tape um, anyway. So I am just going to I'm gonna cut a piece of this. And I have not had one of these come off, one of these line co or, or this book tape. I haven't had one come off at all. I did notice on some of my early ones, because I write the volume number on it in Velcro. Um, I didn't, in Velcro. What on earth? In Sharpie. Where did that even come from? Okay, let me zoom in just a tiny bit. Okay. So here's my book tape, and I'm gonna put it, this is the uh, raw edge or the, you know, the edge of the transparency. I'm gonna put it so it just covers this up so that it grabs this whole edge. I'm gonna press it down and then I'm gonna wrap it around the book. So um, I'm just gonna stick that. I don't wanna cover up my blah, blah. Oh, good, and my transparency is nice. So then I'm just gonna work this because I want this as flat as possible. I'm just gonna work this over the edge and all the way around to the back. Okay, there we go. So there's the spine. Um, the last thing I do is put my volume number on it. Um, I will say, because when I use these books, I tend to, sometimes I will fold it back on itself like that, and I guess that's what's causing, sometimes the, it wears out right here. So this tape, this other book tape, see, I didn't, I didn't need any on here. Let's see, didn't need any on that one. But um, this book tape is really good for putting inside here. And I guess I could just do it now. That way I don't worry about it later. So this is two inches and I'm just gonna cut it basically in half. Not really measuring or anything. I keep cutting that way off. I'll just go ahead and put a piece of this in here now so that I don't have to worry about it later. So I'm gonna put it right there on the edge of that page. And then I'm gonna kind of fold that back. Push that down in there. So now that first, that is reinforced there. And then I can use the other, the other inch of this tape to reinforce the back. get the backing off of it and same thing I'm going to start by putting it on the paper like that and then I'm going to kind of see I have my book folded back like this and I'm going to push it down and I'm sorry push it down into that seam there and then burnish that down and get rid of that So there we go. That's my next uh, my next journal, volume twelve. Um, if you want, you could put a depending on you know, you know what kind of or if you put a um, pocket. I really like having the pocket. Um, and of course, I'll put probably two pages of this paper that from the book. Put a couple of pages of that in the back so I'll have it if I need it. Um, 
once I write, this is what, 12? Let me see if I have a, a nice Sharpie. Actually, these are, no, that's not. I'm really low on Sharpies. Let's see, volume 12. This is the absolute hardest part for me is trying to write on this spine. B O L. So that's all I do, write it on there with a Sharpie. So the next thing I'll probably paint here and I'll do whatever I need to do to make a, um, a title page. This one I doodled flowers all over it and then colored them in. And this one I painted some neon yellow and, or neon red and some yellow. This one, I have a whole bunch of these old uh, rub on letters and I tried using some of the old ones and they just kind of disintegrated so I ended up having to put um, some tape over it to hold it down because they were lifting off so that's what I'm going to do next I'm going to make a title page for my next journal and then when I finish this one up in the next day or two um, I'll have the next one ready to move into the glare is terrible so anyway, if you're interested in making one of these, um, you know, like I said, this, this is where my inspiration for keeping these kind of books came from. And that is because Linda Berry actually teaches or taught a class called um, What It Is. And she also has a book named that. But this book is literally about journaling, about, you know, and it has things to put in your record in your book. One of my favorite things in here, you know, she's got how to do a daily diary, how to keep your composition notebook. Um, and then she, she has a lot of stuff in here when you want to journal that's about paying attention. You know, that maybe you're describing in your journal for the day, what what did you smell? You know, what did you see? What did you overhear? Not just what you did, but what did you hear other people say? What did you, you know, just, she's just got some really, really awesome information on um, journaling and kind of recording your day. And I mean, I recommend all of her books, but um, this one is by far my favorite. So there you go. That's how I prep my composition book. And I hope you all are staying healthy, um, staying home. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.